Hello there, it's Ryan Robson with Nuke for 3D Artists. Right, we're in Max. What are we doing in Max? Um, basically, what I've got here is a very simple, simple particle flow setup. It was for something for a client. I can't remember mentioning the client. Uh, you may well have seen the end result, not this particular. This has nothing to do with the rest of it. Uh, all this is a particle setup. Each one of the particles has a tiny little 2D card with a gluey particle shape on. Simple as that. I've set up my render elements here. I have a diffuse filter, uh, self-illumination. Diffuse filter I actually get rid of because it's empty. Z-depth, a velocity pass, which is what we're going to be using. Don't need a lighting pass. The sample rate was only there to... Uh, help me set up my render settings to get something fast uh, that was pretty good, right? Uh, the, if you want to know how that works, for if you're a very, very user, go and look at the documentation because there was a lot of us did a lot of work on it. Um, and the bottom line, sort of oversimplifying it, is the more red you see in it, the worse it is, right? And the longer your render will take. So, um, if you, as I say, if you want to know more about that, set to say the scope of the tutorial. Look at the documentation, fantastic. This will work with any render engine. All you need is a velocity pass, really, and your beauty pass to add motion blur in post. Now, adding motion blur in a 3D application, uh, as you're probably aware, can take a while, all right? Um, this has no motion blur at the moment. I've set the render up uh, so it's pretty fast uh, right now. And we'll see, it'll be done in about 15, 20 seconds. This is at 720p. Uh, I don't need it any higher for the tutorials because, well, basically, it just takes too long. So there you go, 13 and a half seconds. Normally, you'd make sure that these are saving out as a multi-channel EXR. You can do it as single passes, as individual files. It is usually faster from a compositing point of view, but again, outside of the scope of the tutorial. So what I need to do here is go into here, and I already have my test one over there. This is really simple. Really, 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 really simple. I have uh, three sets of files that were rendered out. And I need this one. All right, hit S. First of all, I need to set my resolution. In this case, it's 1280 by 720. I think it was 24 FPS, not too sure. Uh, I could just jump back to max and check and see what I've got. And da, 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 where's the bloody thing at? I think I've hidden most of the, most of the stuff on here. But yeah, um, what I've got is pretty sure it's 24 FPS. Yeah, it is. Right, just wanted to check that. So we have three of these. Each of them um, is 100 frames of non-motion blurred stuff. So this there's this one. This one's got a lot more movement in it. There's no motion blur whatsoever. And if we, for example, just play this one without motion blur, it it looks like what it is, glowy little balls. There's no motion in it. Um, and once this is cached through, you'll see it just, it doesn't look right, okay? So what we're going to do is very, very, very simple. We'll start on this one, which has, it starts off incidentally with a skull shape and a ball. You can just want to make the skull shape out, cache it out, and then it flies, loads of stuff, right? What we're going to need is a vector blur, like that. And we're going to connect that to here, all right? And we'll view this, and we'll put it somewhere in the middle. UV channels, but doing, there are, you know, there's velocity clamped, but we haven't got that in there, so we need to use velocity. Boom. We've got loads of different render ones here. Um, I can't remember if I clamped it. Let's have a check. Boom. It's important to know these things. Yep, it's clamp velocity. Cool. Right. So we've got V-ray velocity clamped. Um, now, the motion amount is controlled by this. Right. So if I just go straight in here. At the moment, switch it on and off. There's not a lot going on there, right? If we stick it up to 1... You can see you've got a lot more motion going on now. If you want to stick it up to a crazy amount, it'll look terrible. You can see you've got 28 seconds there to do it. You know what I mean? It's it's going to take a while. Um, now, this won't use a GPU, although I have a very fancy three and a half grand gaff graphics card, courtesy of AMD that they gave me, um, because the current versions of Nuke will not work with Radeon cards and AMD cards. 
allegedly nuke version 11 will. So if I just cancel this and stick it down to something a bit lower, right, in a sensible territory. Now, I don't need that on there. We can make sure we have this on here. I'm going to set it properly. Sorry if I go a bit. See, there it's gone. It's totally mad. So I know that we'll see. I'll just check on the other one because I know it's about 1 or 1 1.2. We'll go for 1.2. It's quite fast and it adds motion blur. So if we just go between them like that, you can see it's added motion onto each of the tails. In fact, if I go down here, you see the faster it gets, the longer they are. If I quickly go to the velocity pass on here, you'll see how it changes. The faster it, it goes, the more sort of red it goes. All right. So we have that there. Let's do a quick um, bit of a comp on here because that's the sort of mood I'm in today. Right, we've got that there. And let's see if, actually I haven't tested the Z depth. What is the Z depth like? Is it usable? Mm, it's sort of possibly usable. Uh, we'll give it a go, but I don't expect uh, great guns out of it. As I say, this was a test, nothing more. Then we can go here, we can go for we can set up. Is there anything we can put on this? I really don't think there is as much. There's not much I can do with it. Mm, sort of-ish. Yeah, it's about as good as that's going to get. The, 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 maybe if I do it like this, it'll make it a bit easier. Yeah, some of them are in focus, some of them aren't now. The result there, we've got depth of field on it. Um, we've got the size, we can bring it up a bit. So it's got a bit of a blur as well. We'll add a grade node because why not? We'll clamp the blacks a bit. Maybe even add a bit of colour, make them a bit redder. Like that, so it looks a bit more like lovely things. Now, this setup will work obviously with all of them. So if I quickly just cache this through, I'll pause at this point because it's going to take a wee while to take a couple of minutes. Right, so it's cached everything out and that's basically got some nice motion blur going on in that scene. Um, if we just change this over to the, the second one, I'm going to, uh, for the moment, switch off the defocus. Um, the grid might be might be a little bit aggressive for this, but we could take the white point up. Oh, that's better. Right, so you can see on here, especially, there's some amazing flying about bits uh, on this. So if I take a bit like this one, I can find a bit where it's near the camera, like there, right? Now, if I take off the vector blur, you can see they are blurring along the motion path, right? So if I will just see how long it takes to do this without having a much better without uh, the Z depth on, um, and you'll we'll let that cache through. I won't pause at this time because it's getting to be a pain in the backside to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, particles are always quite interesting. To do. You can do lots of extremely complex things with particles, or some very easy things. This is fairly easy setup. Um, now, because the only thing that I notice as well is that uh, you do have to be careful using a 2D card on a particle system because sometimes you can have um, issues at render time where, because it's on a card, the opacity isn't aliased correctly. Um, that depends on the render engine. I've used most of them, to be honest with you, uh, one time or other. And they all have the little idiosyncrasies, if you get what I mean, uh, when it does the part those particles and stuff. Um, once we've got this cached out, it'll you know look pretty nice. And you can see there, we're getting a lot of motion blur on these because they're moving really bloody fast. And these ones up here, they're not moving very much, so they're pretty much staying static um, as well, you know. So what we're up to now, we're up to 57. I tell you, I will pause it just to save you watching this. Okay, we're on the last couple of seconds now, and you should be sitting playing, playing through. And you can see it's whizzing around, it looks in motion. In fact, what we could do is play it backwards. 
if you started off with everything, all the particles up there, it would uh, look better. So what about this one here, uh, which has got some epic movement? Um, now, if I take a channel like that and we look at the Z depth, right, we've got lots of depth. You can see what I mean. The Z depth is not really correct for uh, the particles because it's not taking into account the opacity. Uh, a lot of render engines do that. Now, look at the color differences here. All right, so we're starting red, it's going quite fast, and they, you know, they're all over the place, these things. So if I take that there, we disconnect, connect with this, and then have a look at our grid here. And we've got, you know, quite a bit of, um, of blurring going on. The moment it gets down here, you can see you're getting lots of oval shapes. Um, I'm trying to find one of the faster frames because some of them, you know, like we saw before, will fly around like absolute numpties, you know. So we've got this here. And again, it's the same thing, cash it out for a bit. It won't take very long. So there we can see the whole thing, you know, working well. In fact, if I stop this and go to frame 56, you can see what I mean there. Now let's just again um, have a quick look at the um, correlation between this particle down here, right, and its velocity. Which we better do up here, actually, like that. You can see this is a lot more yellow. So it's if we look at that value there, a value of 140, this one up here. It's got a value of nine. See that when it goes HSV down there, all right? We're interested in that V. So that's 20. Up here, there's a value of two, it's hardly moving. There's one up here, 15. This is minus 50. So that one's moving probably about the fastest of all of them, all right? A value of 140, 347. See, yeah. So that's basically the whole velocity um, and motion blur and post. Now, it's not proper 3D motion blur. But most people will not be able to tell the goddamn difference. Trust me on this one. Uh, unless you're, uh, you've got a project where it has to be 3D motion blur, um, I would strongly recommend using motion blur and post and depth of field. But again, it depends on the project. Some uh, art directors and directors like a certain look um, and they like it in 3D. That's all I'll say about that without giving away too many things on projects I've worked on. But yeah, this works it, obviously not just on particles, it will work on anything, right? So hopefully that's been useful for you and it's one of those nice little tips that you really do need to know a bit about. If you're trying to do a style frame for lighting, you know, for something, then you really need to be able to show it with depth of field, with motion blur, be able to change the lighting around. Uh, we showed you some of that using the light select passes and also how to relight in, you know, in Nuke. And we might do another one showing you how to set the lighting up as a direct result, which should give you plenty of tools to do the job. Anyway, I'm Wayne Robson. Bye.